What's up guys? Welcome back to the LS GQ build. We finally got the car out here now. Um, so this is the GQ we will be swapping the L98 and the six-speed auto into. Quite a tidy old jigger. Got ourselves our little grandpa sun visor. Pretty awesome. So anyway, it's currently still got the TB42 auto in it. So we're going to run it up and do a bit of a baseline of what we're working with as far as the TB42 goes um, before we start pulling it all out and doing our conversion. So let's see how much power our TB42 makes. You can see in here, 430,000 Ks on the old girl. All right, big TB. All right, so it's really hard to lock this thing in a gear because you can't really lock it in a gear. Uh, even in third with overdrive turned off, it gets to a certain road speed where it just will engage overdrive. You can't pretty much, <laughs> there's nothing you can do about it. So it must be some sort of safety that they've put in it because the gearbox has been rebuilt fairly recently. But anyway, um, so you can see here, pretty consistently sort of just getting to nearly 90 horsepower at the wheels. We're looking at just under 90 horsepower at the wheels out of this thing, which is about a bit more than I expected. Actually, I was expecting somewhere between 70 and 80. Um, which is not too bad for the old jigger with that sort of case on it. It's done pretty well, so let's get our L98 in and see what we can do. Righto guys, so we've done our pre-dyno, we've got our baseline, what we're working off, and uh, I've actually had a made out today to vac out the AC system. So we are pretty much ready to start yeeting stuff out of here. We've already removed the radiator, we removed that the day the owner dropped it off because he actually took it to a radiator guy near where he lives to actually get completely re and redone. So the radiator's on the way to being done. I talked to the aircon guy today when he backed it out about getting a new condenser for this thing while it's at this point as well. So that when this goes back to the owner, it's completely serviced, new condenser, you know, new radiator, gassed up, mod plated, ready to go. Full drive and drive out. So anyway, now's the fun part. We get to yeet all this crap out of here. One heifer of a gearbox it was actually recently rebuilt, so pretty sure it's still under warranty. The owner recently had it rebuilt, it's still under warranty, so he's gonna be looking to sell that. But anyway, now we can get this heifer of a T heifer of a TB out of there. We can put it all in a trailer, the trailer there, which I will take back down to the owner tomorrow. And you can have it back, because we don't want it. All right, we've got one empty engine bay. It needs a really good clean up and a bit more tidying, but the important thing is that our motor and gearbox have been removed. So we'll work on getting our transfer case off, um, make sure we've got all that stuff that we need for our conversion still here, and we'll get the trailer in here and start getting all this stuff in the trailer that we don't want. This thing should go really well with a little six liter with that cam in it and um our six speed i reckon this thing will be awesome the owner won't know himself it really makes me want to do one <laughs> but i want to do a gu and i'd probably do a 480 with a turbo six liter but we can all dream we can all dream can't we anyway for now i'll just keep stealing rex's cruiser <laughs> we need to fix it first yeah we need to fix that too all right guys so we're just here having a look over everything trying to visualize exactly what we've got to do uh the main reason was to ensure that we had everything off the gearbox that we were gonna need before we sent it back down in the trailer. Um, and we figured out that this is something we hadn't really accounted for or thought about. Um, definitely hadn't quoted for or anything like that either. 
is uh, the, the kit from Mark's four-wheel drive adapters actually doesn't have any solution to bolt the linkage for the four-wheel drive selector to the new adapter. So obviously the GU is a bit different and the GQ you have this whole big linkage for your four-wheel drive selector, which the kit, as you can see, this is our adapter. So this is gonna go around this area between the transfer case and the 6LE. Um, there is no bosses, no provisions, nothing to actually make this work. So it means that we have to fabricate off this, probably using a lot of these bolt holes. Um, we have to actually fabricate a mount system to make this linkage work, which you'll have to include that and this. Um, and you know, obviously all the spacings have to be Mickey Mouse and spot on and all that other stuff as well. Um, the other thing we've realized actually, cause uh, it was one of those things, the owner insisted on getting all his own stuff for it. So we let him get all his own gear. Um, and the owner did send me a few like methods of procedure for a few things. Um, there's a method of procedure for cutting down the applet shaft of the gearbox, which we already knew about. Method of procedure for a few of the new idlers and stuff which go on the engine, which again, already knew about, already expecting, knew that was gonna be a problem. Um, but there was not really anything else. So I'd assume that was pretty much it for the kit. And it was that was all stuff we already knew was going to be an issue. This we hadn't encountered, which we hadn't counted on. It was not in any of the mops that I was sent. And we also, they supplied this cross member as well. And this cross member is specifically for if you were putting a 6L80 on an LS into a ZD car, um, because they're a bit different. Or if you wanted to move the whole setup back a bit and you needed the adjustable cross member. But we don't need the cross member, so that can probably go back to them. Uh, Cause we have no intention of moving the, the engine further forward or back for any reason. Uh, we'd rather, leave the transfer case where it is because that way all the shifter mounts in the floor and everything uh, for the four drive selector stays the same and the tail shaft legs stay the same. So that's one thing we can probably do without. So we'll leave that here just in case uh, until the conversion's finished, but I'm pretty sure we don't actually need that cross member at all. But yeah, and then there's nothing in the method of procedure about uh, this issue. We only found when we started looking through the website just before um, about it. So unfortunately we didn't know it it's one of those things where we're just gonna have to fabricate it up, which we don't mind. We're happy to do stuff like that. Um, it's sort of one of the things we're pretty good at. Uh, what's that, a piston? Gudgeon pin. Gudgeon pin. What I'm thinking is um, use our lathe that we have access to off our good mate. Yeah, and turn just, it out. Just turn that out to sit. To suit as a receiver for that. Yeah, and then we just chop it Lop off. It. and Weld it to the bracket. Weld it on, and that's our little receiver. So you can see there's a, a boss in the actual like, I don't even know what you call this, the transfer case mount to the gearbox. Anyway, that is a boss which actually receives that, which the selector pivots on. So we have to incorporate a receiver for that into this mount. Um, anyway, like I was saying, we don't mind doing stuff like this. This is the stuff we actually do enjoy doing. It's just one of those things where it's very labor intensive. It's very, very time consuming. So I could actually see probably the making of this bracket taking almost as long as the rest of the conversion <laughs> altogether. Um, but anyway, it is what it is. Um, it's just something we're gonna have to do. Uh, we're gonna have to bust ass to get it done because the customer needs it done and back in like another two and a half weeks now because it's his work car. So anyway, just something we hadn't accounted for. So you'll get to see the process of how to do that if you're looking at doing a, this swap on your GQ because obviously Mark's four drives don't have a solution. We were talking about, um, we have access to a lot of CNC stuff from engineering and that sort of thing. So. We have access to draw things up and CNC and, and mass produce things. We had thought about trying to do this in a way that we could mass produce a part for people doing this swap on a GQ. But I really, I just, I don't think the market's that great for people doing a 6L80 into a GQ. Not many people do it with the GQs. That's obviously why Mark's adapters don't offer a solution. And secondly is because of the shape and how, um, basically how involved this bracket's gonna be and how many different parts it's gonna be, you'd never be able to make it out of one piece. Like if you were to machine it out of one piece, it would be a massive block and it would be a lot of wastage. Yeah, a lot of wastage, it'd be horrendously expensive. Um, so you'd have to do it out of multiple different plates, folded up and welded them all together, uh, which you know makes it a very labor intensive part, which sort of makes it not really worth producing. So it's one of those things, we'll document it very well for you guys, for anyone who wants to do it themselves, but I don't think it's really a big enough market or profitable enough for us to actually make one that's mass produced to sell it. So anyway, we'll see how we go. But uh, anyway, the, the conclusion of all that is um, we're gonna keep the gearbox here until the conversion's finished to make sure we have all our uh, placement and everything and um, sizing and, and everything's perfect because 
Next thing you know, we'll send the gearbox back and then we'll need something off it and it'll be a problem because it's another two hour drive to go get stuff. It's just, it's one of those things. So the motor can go back, the old exhaust, all that stuff can go back, but we're gonna keep the gearbox here. All right, Rex has gone into town to the hardware to get the tarp to cover it up and I will take that down with me tomorrow. So that pretty much is gonna wrap up this episode, guys. It's been a nice little episode getting that stuff out of the car and finding a few uh, issues we're gonna run into along the way, but Anyway, it's all good. Better to know sooner rather than later. So, um, not to worry, like I said, it is something we can find a solution to, something we enjoy doing. It's just uh, it's just one of those things that we had in here. Accounted for as far as the timeline for the project and the cost of the project. But anyway, that's what you get. So, still gotta cut all these off. So, next episode will probably be likely prepping this stuff and um, starting to prep our gearbox and stuff, ready to go in. So. Look forward to that. Thank you for watching. Hope you are enjoying this build series. Um, hopefully there's a fair few people out there that um, can get a lot of value out of this build series. If they're thinking about doing it in future. So anyway, um, thanks for watching. Smash subscribe if you haven't already. Go to the store, buy yourself a shirt. Goes a long way for us. And uh, we'll see you on the next episode. Peace out guys, see you bye.